Hey everyone, welcome back again to Hillside Harvest Homestead. Today I'm actually going to be drawing blood from my goats. There's three diseases that I want to um, have them tested for uh, before they have their babies. So I'll go into those a little later in the video, but at this point um, I just need to get the blood drawn and um, I will show you how I do that. So you obviously need your needles. Um, you can either buy them. I don't have any more um, actual needles, individual needles to put on the syringe. And um, that's what I used yesterday and I used up my needles. Um, but I got 18 gauge needles and you can use either like 18 gauge or 20 gauge needles. Um, and you can buy them already put together like this. Um, so there's different ways to buy needles. Um, uh, different places that you can buy them. I just get these in the um, feed stores, not a big deal. So 18 or 20 gauge, what you need to think about is when you're looking at gauges for needles, the um, s when you get to like um, 18, 20, those are getting lar the number is getting larger, but as the number gets larger in the gauge, the needle actually is smaller. So these ones, I looked at them, and they actually look like they're probably either 20 or 22, which 22 is getting a little small for blood drawing, but um, I actually think that this might work, um, but they were 20s. I'm pretty sure that these are 20 gauge. Um, and then yesterday I used 18 gauge. So either way works. These are red top vials. And um, these are what you're going to send the blood um, to the lab in. Okay. Um, these, I actually, I go to my vet, my local vet, and um, just get them from them. Um, you need some sort of either sharp or pen. My Sharpies have a tendency to disappear, so I don't know where they are right now. So I just use a pen, and then I put the animal's name on here or whatever identification that you have for your animals um, you're going to put on here. So I do like to use um, some rubbing alcohol to clean the area off um, beforehand. Obviously, you can put it on with gauze. This is a big piece of gauze, so I cut it up. But however you want to use that, that's not a big deal. But you should disinfect the area um, as best as possible. It also helps wet the hair down a little bit so that you can see the vein a little more. And then I have trimmers. Um, and I use this, I do clip their neck area where I'm going to be injecting. And I make a big wide sweep just so that I can see everything nice and clear. Um, it's going to be incredibly hard to find that vein with the hair on it. So I um, mail my samples to Sage Labs and it gives you the prices on the sides and the different sorts of things that they can test for. So you can choose if you want to do them individually or if you want to do a whole package. Um, I do them individually because I'm not testing for Q fever. I just don't feel that I need to. You want to make sure that these are, you can rubber band them all together and make sure that they're not moving. I like to wrap them up in a lot of like um, paper towels or something that, um, where they're not gonna jiggle around and break. Um, and then I'll put some um, ice packs in there as well um, to try to keep them cool um, while they ship. So, and then that's it. That's all that you need um, to be able to take your goat's blood. This video has been really unique. Um, it's been a bit of a challenge. I've had to film it in different um, stages because it has not worked out the way I planned it in my head. It was going to be super easy to just go and draw some blood. I've done this before. It's not hard. Drawing blood from goats is really easy, but I haven't done it in about five years. So I went out um, to draw blood, had my camera, I was ready to go. My son was out there, my husband was out there and um, they were taking turns holding the goats. It can be difficult holding the goats um, because they're, I have Nigerian dwarves and so they're small. So it kind of gets it into your back and your, your muscles, your leg muscles and everything because you're bending over trying to hold on to this goat. Um, and so some of them uh, do really well and some of them don't. It was crazy how my nicer goats actually gave me more trouble than my 
goat, my one goat that is like really skittish and doesn't want you to touch her and um, you have to trick her into being caught. She actually did really well um, and didn't move at all when I was trying to take her blood. The other ones were a little more difficult. So anyways, it didn't work out when I first went out there. I figured that it would be like riding a bike, you know, cause I remember how to do it. And so I just went out there. I was like, yep, we'll get this. And it didn't work out that way. I couldn't find the vein in their neck worth my life. And so poor little things, um, <laughs> got a lot of pokes in their necks. So as, as I'm trying to find it, I can't miss it, missed it, missed it. So after a little bit, I was like, okay, we're all taking a break. And you know, my husband, my son, their backs were tired and the goats I'm sure were tired and really sick of being stabbed. So I'm going to walk away. We'll come back again. I went back to the house and was like, this is just driving me insane. So I looked up some articles, how to draw a goat's blood and um, got some reminders. I was like, oh yeah, I remember now. I know exactly what I forgot to do. So I went back to my son and was like, can you please come outside with me? And can we do this again? Because I know how to do it now. Light bulb went on. I know what I was forgetting and it's gonna drive me insane if I don't try again. So he went with me. I did not take the camera with me because um, I wasn't quite sure if it was gonna work or not. I mean, I was really positive, but you never know. So I didn't take the camera with me and I did what I was supposed to and I found the vein and I took their blood and it didn't get on camera. So I missed an opportunity. Anyways, um, one of the goats, I didn't get much blood at all. So I'm actually going to, or I went and, um, drew some more blood. I do have a clip of that. I wanted to go ahead and, um, test my buck. I wasn't originally going to, but I decided to, um, since I needed to get something on film. So I went to do his and my camera was dead and so I didn't get it on film so I was charging that got him done got a little battery left in my camera and then um, drew some more blood from my goat prim which is the one that I needed a little more blood from so I did get that one on camera and you will see that clip uh, she did jump and so when she jumped it pulled the needle out of the vein a little bit and I wasn't able to find it so I did have to stick her twice you know it happens it's not always pleasant you know things things just happen they're animals and you know stuff happens so on to the important part of this the three diseases that I already mentioned, CAE, CL, and Yanni's. So Yanni's looks like John's, and forever I was calling it John's until I looked it up a little bit ago and was like, oh, it's Yanni's. <laughs> Why? But I don't know. Anyways, Yanni's is what it is. It took me forever to remember that because I was calling it Johan's, and <laughs> like, it's Yanni's. So, Let's just go over kind of explaining what those three are. Uh, CAE is an arthritic disease. So um, typically it's not that bad. It is arthritis, uh, which they'll get in their knees. Um, that's typically what they get and it can affect them in a young age or it can affect them in an older age. Most animals get arthritis when they get old. You know, so that aspect of the disease is not that big of a deal. The other aspect that they may get, the thing that you don't know how it's going to affect them. They can get arthritis or they can get the neurological aspect of the disease, which is the part of the disease that you have to put them down. You don't know how it's going to affect them. You know, if they just have the mild arthritis or um, the neurological part of the disease. So um, again, arthritis, it can be mild to severe, you know, 
you just don't know. And obviously that affects the way they move. They get it in their knees. The neurological part of it, if they get it uh, under when they're under six months old, uh, what happens is they will have difficulties getting up and down. You'll notice that they'll struggle getting up and down. And eventually they won't be able to get up at all. So um, at that point, you know, you have to put them down. When they're older, what you'll notice is they'll be making a lot of circles. They'll just keep walking around in circles and then they'll have a head tilt. Um, so again, it affects them neurologically. You can't do anything about it. There's, there's no cure for that. So you have to put your animal down. There is a lot of debate in this disease, the CAE, as to who can transmit it. So, and there's two sides of the spectrum. Some say that it's transmitted um, through breeding from the doe to the buck. If the doe has CAE and the buck does not, you can transmit it that way. Other people say that that's not correct. So, I actually don't believe that it's correct, and the reason is because I've actually seen how um, it's not correct. So, and, and the reason that I actually came to this and, and knew about it was because of some 4-H leaders um, that I know. They're, they're uh, the goat leaders in 4-H, and they've been breeding and showing for years. And one of them actually was the judge, uh, who is one who also feels that, you know, it isn't transmitted from a doe to a buck. So this woman, the judge, both of them actually, they have does that have CAE, and they have, but they keep bucks that don't have CAE, and they breed their doe to their bucks, um, and their bucks have never contracted CAE. They allowed me, I had a doe that had CAE, and they allowed me to breed her with their clean buck. So, I mean, that's how confident they are that it's not transmitted from a doe to a buck. Now, it can be transmitted from a buck to a doe. So you want to make sure that your bucks don't have it. Um, but as an individual goat owner, goat breeder, it's your decision as to how you feel. You know, because there are people out there who will not allow you to breed your doe to their buck if your doe has CAE. So, you know, that's your choice. You know, um, I totally understand that you want to take precautions to keep your farm and your herd clean. So, um, you know, that's your choice. It can be transmitted or is transmitted also through milk, not drinking the milk, but, um, well, I mean, it is, it's not something that we can contract. It will be contracted through milk to the kid. Um, so if you have a doe that has CAE, do not feed the babies her milk. If you're milking that doe, then you need to save that doe for last. Milk all your clean does first, and then you can milk the doe that has CAE. And the reason being is you, you can spread it that way. Um, so you just need to make sure that you're taking proper precautions to try to keep it from spreading. And again, it's because you don't know how it's going to affect your goats. You know, if they get it neurologically, you're putting your herd down. So um, just to make sure that your, your babies are not drinking uh, milk from a doe that has CAE, uh, I'll, I'll bottle feed my babies um, if that's the case. Um, so that you can do whatever you want. If you have other does that are um, don't have CAE, you can feed babies that milk, whatever. Or, you know, if you can get those babies to latch on to another doe, whatever. You know, that's your choice as to how you want to work with that. But that is CAE. Um, the other one is CL. And CL is abscesses. Um, and it typically is in the neck and head area. And... When you're buying goats, you need to make sure that you're looking at their bodies. If there is a goat that you're looking at wanting to buy and has an abscess, do not buy it because you don't know. You don't know if it's CL or you don't know if it's just, you know, something that got infected or whatever. Um, 
extremely contagious and what you have to do is you do have to lance it get all of the infection out but you have to be very very clean um, with it because it is transmitted so the abscesses can happen internally as well and you don't know that they have those unless they're tested so it's important when you're buying animals um, to make sure that they've already been tested for that stuff before you buy them because you don't want to bring that onto your property and expose the rest of your herd to it. There's no cure for it. Um, and so obviously, you know, if you have these abscesses, it can affect their health. Um, and so that's just, it's not something that you want. Um, so let's see. And then Yanni's is an intestinal infection. And it's spread through the manure um, no cure for it. There are some antibiotics. I think, I believe they're antibiotics, some sort of drug that you can give them either through injection or taken orally, but it's not guaranteed that it's going to help anything. And the problem with using, um, or going that route is that you may spend a lot of money on um, treating this animal for months and find out that it doesn't work and you have to put the animal down anyways. So this infection in the intestine, um, what it does is it's there's swelling in there and it keeps the animal from being able to absorb nutrients from its feed. And so essentially what it's what's happening is that it's starving to death. So um, it is, like I said, spread through the manure first. Um, so again, that's one of those things that you need to make sure that those animals don't have that before it even comes onto your property. That manure, the animals eat around the manure, the manure can get in the water, because goats do that. And you know, if the animal is drinking that water, if there's a little manure in there, they're gonna get it. If they're eating the grass around the manure, they're gonna get it, you know. So, um, it can also, if this um, infection is more advanced, it can actually spread through the milk. Um, if it's not that advanced, it can um, be get into the milk. And the reason that that happens is, um, you know, there's poop usually around the area that you're milking. Hopefully you keep your milking area as clean as possible, but animals poop a lot. So a dust, debris, things like that can, from manure can get into the milk. And then if you feed that milk to other animals, other goats, it will spread to them. So uh, it's really important to make sure that you're preventing your herd from getting these diseases by testing them. And you should test them once a year. Um, uh, there's one woman that, that I know that won't allow anybody to bring their animals onto her property for breeding unless they've had two years worth of clean testing. So, you know, I mean, you just need to be um, up to date on these things. Once a year you test them, um, especially if you're bringing other animals in, you know, you don't know what you're introducing to your herd all the time. Sometimes people lie when they want to sell an animal and say, oh yeah, they're clean, I've tested them. Um, you know, the woman that I bought three of my does from said that they were clean. And then I heard from somebody else, oh no, she doesn't test her animals. She doesn't ever do that. So I was like, oh gosh, I wasn't quite sure what I'd gotten into. So. Um, I did test them and uh, thankfully they were all clean. All of them were, so that was great. But those are the three main diseases that you need to be testing for. You need to try to keep them off your property. Um, so Yanni's is something that sticks around for a long time in the manure and in the ground. So that one is um, actually pretty serious. Um, I mean, all three of them are, all three of them are 
diseases that you do have to put your animals down for and there aren't cures for it. So um, be diligent in taking care of your herd. And um, so anyways, this video, like I said, was difficult to make. I do have, like I said, that clip of me um, taking Prim's blood and um, I did get it done. What you need to do when you're getting a goat's blood is there are veins on both sides of their neck. And what I forgot to do is that you need to turn the goat's neck to the side and it will actually make that vein uh, much easier to reach. And how you can tell that you've got the vein is you can press down low on their neck and if you see if you've got the vein, if you've kind of pinched it off, you will see that vein pop out um, because that blood is um, getting caught right there in that vein. So if you turn your goat's neck to the right, you're going to um, look on the left side of their neck for the vein. Okay, if you turn the neck to the left, you're gonna look on the right side of the neck for that vein. So either way, it doesn't matter. The vein is on both sides. So, but that's the cool part is that you can actually pinch that blood off and you see that vein point out. So, and what I like to do, but just because it's easiest, um, is have someone like the person who's holding the goat hold on to that vein, have them pinch that and then stick that needle into that vein while that blood is still in there. And um, that vein is really super exposed. Just makes it easier to see it, to see what you're doing. Um, so anyways, that's how you do it. Super simple. Um, so anyways, I hope that this is a good learning experience for you guys. If you don't know how to do this, I hope that this helps you, um, helps you, uh, hope that it helps you understand the diseases and, um, just what you need to be aware of and, um, taking care of in your herd. Just make sure that your herd stays healthy and um, it's the best that you can do for them. So enjoy the video and I hope that you guys like and subscribe um, and be sure to share with your friends. The like button is just as important as the subscribe button for us and we really appreciate your support and we're enjoying making these movies. We're not very good at it yet, just because we're new at it. So I thank you for bearing with us. Um, we are enjoying it. We love our homesteading and we love sharing it with you so that we, we hope that you keep coming back. You have a wonderful day. Okay, so here we have Prim. She's already shaved and I cleaned her off with alcohol. We have her head turned to the side. So whatever side you want to, um, take the blood from, you're going to turn the goat's head the opposite direction. Um, and you don't want to pull it real super tight, um, but not loose either. So if we press down here, and we'll have to find it. We should be able to see right here is the vein. It just popped up. I don't know if you can see it real well. When I push, it pops up. If we can get her to stand still. So turn her head to the side a little bit more. Okay. Let's see if we can find it again. And she's got white skin, so it's hard to see, but it's right there. Let's see her. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that very well. Okay, so when you push down low, you should be able to see that vein pop up. All right, so what I'm going to have Anthony do is push on that vein. Okay, push it. And you should be able to feel it. It's kind of squishy right where it is as well. All right, so here we go. Oh, make sure she stands still. We're in. And draw that blood out. Whoa. I'm still baby. There we go. Oh, I just missed the vein right there. I'm gonna, we're gonna, I need you to push down some more. There you go. Okay. There we 
go. Okay, and we're gonna take the full syringe. All right. Pinch it off a little bit, it helps um, that blood clot for just a second. Good girl. Good girl, and that's it. So now that we've got that blood in the syringe, we're just gonna stick it right in that red top vial and it just sucks that blood right in. I don't have to hold it or anything. And it goes in. And then that's it. You're done. So this video was actually kind of really difficult to make. We were having all kinds of problems. So we were doing Peter and my phone went dead and so we weren't able to record that. So Peter, our little buck is done. Um, so anyways, it's taken a little while. We've had a lot of problems with this video, which is not meant to be. But anyways, we got it done. They're all taken care of and you got to see Prim get her um, blood drawn. And that was the point of this video. So I am super glad that this episode is actually over um, because it was an absolute pill. So between my not being able to find the veins of these poor animals and my camera going dead and I mean it was just so much that happened. <laughs> it was difficult to film certain animals because they were jumping all over the place. It was just total chaos. So anyways, but the job got done and I'm glad the job is done. I would have loved for you to have seen the blood being drawn on Peter. Um, he's darker and I think it would have been easier for you to see that vein popping out. I don't know that you'll actually really be able to see it on Prim um, because of her white skin. So I hope um, that that helps you if this is something that you need to do. I um, hope that it was clear for you. Um, and it's just something that you need to do once a year um, to take care of your animals and make sure that they are healthy. Um, so anyways, I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Please make sure that you like and subscribe. That like button is just as important as that subscribe button. And it means a lot to us. And I appreciate every one of you that has been following us. Um, and I just hope that you have a wonderful day.